we are still learning to use the internet and social media in a more responsible way that has taken several decades. And I think for generative AI as well, the learning curve is going to be slow. There's also the AI that generates our social media feeds, for instance, and has been blamed for many kinds of problems like increasing polarization, enabling people to use social media to sort of fan the flames of sectarian violence. I think the best way to think about AI regulation is not to focus on the AI part, but instead to focus on what are the harms we're concerned about and to have regulation that mitigates the risk of those harms. You mentioned the example of lawyers getting into trouble with judges. There have been numerous examples of students getting into trouble in schools by using uh, generative AI tools to answer their uh, assignments. Why do you think humans are not really stepping in when they could easily identify that the generative AI tool is giving them wrong information? Why are humans being incapable of correcting technology, if we may? I think maybe I'm a little more optimistic than that. I think we do see many people using these tools in a responsible way. But when someone makes a mistake, of course, that's more likely to make the news. If there is a funny story of a lawyer who has submitted a brief in court that is full of incorrect citations, made up cases and so forth. So we hear about that a lot more, I think, than the millions of people who are using generative AI in beneficial ways and are aware of the limitations. But that said, you know, with any new technology, there is going to be a learning curve. We are still learning to use the internet and social media in a more responsible way that has taken several decades. And I think for generative AI as well, the learning curve is going to be slow. And we see these new technical systems coming out on a time scale that is perhaps too fast for people to adapt to. And if that accelerates further, I think that's going to be a real problem. And we need to think about digital literacy in a different way. And learning how to better make use of digital systems has to be a bigger part of how we spend our time online. It can't be just a passive matter of taking the path of least resistance that is going to become more and more problematic. I must ask you, Professor Arvind, uh, is it really possible to regulate AI? And what's your take on how regulation around the world seems to be panning out? I do think it's possible to regulate AI. And to think about that, we should remember that AI is not just one thing. There are many kinds of AI. We have talked about generative AI and predictive AI. There's also the AI that generates our social media feeds, for instance, and has been blamed for many kinds of problems like increasing polarization, enabling people to use social media to sort of fan the flames of sectarian violence because these uh, AI systems sometimes amplify the most uh, divisive posts that are being shared online. Uh, There is the AI behind self-driving cars, for instance. So there are many kinds of AI. And when we think about all of these separately and we we think about regulation separately, I think that becomes a much more tractable problem than just asking, how can we do AI regulation? So when we look at self-driving cars, just as one example, that's already very heavily regulated, right, in many parts of the world. AI used in banking is very heavily regulated because it's not even specific to AI, simply because banking is heavily regulated. High frequency trading is heavily regulated. And so I think the best way to think about AI regulation is not to focus on the AI part, but instead to focus on what are the harms we're concerned about and to have regulation that mitigates the risk of those harms, whether or not AI is being used. And that is the style of AI regulation that I'm most optimistic about. 